Welcome, Navigation Traders. Today is Friday, April 14th. Welcome to this week's video update. Happy Good Friday. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Uh, don't forget, Monday morning, 825 Central, before the markets open, we do our live broadcast from Facebook and YouTube. So just go to our Facebook channel, Facebook page or YouTube channel, and we stream live where we do our trade of the week. A lot of, uh, a lot of exciting stuff happening right now. I've got a new course coming out probably here in the next week or two. And then uh, with just with high implied volatility creeping up, we've got a lot of a lot of opportunities, a lot of stuff to talk about. So exciting stuff. So make sure you join us then. Let's jump into the trades that we made from this from this past week. First one being a, a, a strangle that we sold, uh, an opening trade in FXE. So we had already we already had a strangle on. We uh, we put that on it when IV percentile was just above 50. Uh, we put another one on when IV percentile jumped up to 94 at the point where we put our second one on. So let's go to the platform and take a look. So we've got we've got two strangles on, one for four contracts, one for three. And so I like to I like to I like to change up the number of contracts, keep them close, but it just helps for uh, for monitoring them a little bit easy. So you can see the, the one with four contracts here down a few bucks on the trade, still very centered, but as you can see, that spike in implied volatility, that's what that'll do to your position, right? It'll make that profit line go down a little bit because implied volatility has gone up. And, and really what that means to you is that um, you're gonna have to probably be in the trade a little bit longer potentially, uh, unless we get a huge collapse in implied volatility. So that's the, that's the uh, four contract strangle. And then let's take a look at the three which is uh, moved down a little bit on us here. So, so that's where we are on that. If we take a look at the charts, I mean, look at, look at what implied volatility is doing in FXE. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's just skyrocketing. You know, there's a lot of talk about some additional quantitative easing. Uh, there's a lot of geopolitical issues with, with different currencies going on. So that's what's causing this, this spike in high implied volatility. And so all that means to us is opportunity, right? So the, the one thing to keep in mind, because I had, I had a few questions about this for members is, okay, implied volatility rank and implied volatility percentile, is it 100, right? So that's maxed out, right? And the, and the answer is no, absolutely not. This can, these can be pegged at 100 for extended periods of time and the options can continue to get more and more expensive. Okay, so don't think of that as being maxed out. You wanna remember what this measures, what this indicator measures is the average uh, or the comparison to itself over the last 12 months, okay? So it's just comparing, basically comparing the price of the options over the last 12 months. That doesn't mean this can't stay pegged at, at 100 for an extended period of time and those and those options can continue to expand in price if things get really crazy. So it, it's really, really critical that you keep your position size small and continue to layer on positions as price moves around uh, to widen out those break evens and kind of diversify your time and price in the trade. But don't don't load the boat. Don't think, oh my gosh, it's it's at 100, can't go any higher. Let's let let's load up. You can't think that way. That's not the way it works. So uh, I've made I made that stake mistake as an early young trader, and I don't want you guys to do the same thing. So. Uh, keep your keep your position size small, uh, and if if implied volatility continues to go up in not only FXE but a lot of these other stock indices and other markets, we're going to have a lot to do. So you want to be able to have capital to spread around and diversify between symbols. So keep your position size small. I know I keep saying that over and over, but it's very very important. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in EWW. So we had a 50-51 a strangle on that we had adjusted previously and we needed to roll that one to, we needed to roll our puts up and we also we needed to roll out from April to May. So we just rolled it all to the 52 strike. So essentially that gave us a 52 straddle in EWW. So if we take a look at that, 
we've got two different positions in EWW, and, and as you can see, the implied volatilities continue to go up since we put this on, so we're down a little bit on this one as well. Uh, but but still very centered, no no issues there. And then the other one that we still have on is a 4750, uh, which so we're looking for a little bit of a down move to to make enough profit on that one before we take that one off. So stay tuned on EWW. But if we look at the charts. You can see what's happened to implied volatility. Again, we're just we're seeing a lot of implied vol volatility. I think these markets are getting nervous. As you can see, the S&P was down over 13, um, and, and and the S&P has continued to just kind of trend a little bit lower the last couple last two three weeks. So, and implied volatility has gone up. And every time there's a little bit of a move down in the market, you see a spike in implied volatility. Okay, that means that there's there's something going on. There's there's nervousness in the market. The market feels heavy. So I would be really, really careful about being long here. Um, not to say that it can't turn around and rip higher uh, and go to new highs again, but uh, but just, just be careful. Next trade was in uh, closing trade in DIA. We had a double calendar on there. We were only 11 days away from expiration. Uh, IV percentile had jumped up to 40 and so we went ahead and, and, and price was very centered in our double calendar so we got out of this for a small profit I think we made a little over 10 percent on the on the whole position so not as much as we wanted to but you know I didn't want to take the risk of holding it closer to expiration uh, and the fact that price was very centered in our double calendar made sense just to take that off and take some profits Next trade was an opening trade in EFA. IV percentile got up to 87 at the point where we put this on. And so we sold some premium in EFA, which is the, uh, it's an international index, kind of like the Dow of, of international. Uh, you can see it, we got in at 87 and it's up to 89 as far as the implied volatility percentile. Still very centered, nothing, nothing else to do there. Now keep in mind, you know, I know not all of our, most of our members can trade strangles and, and things, but if you have an IRA or you have a, a very small account and you can't trade or you're not permission to trade naked options, you can always buy the wings, you know, so you can, you could buy the, buy a put and buy a call uh, to essentially create a synthetic uh, strangle or basically an iron condor. Um, so keep that in mind. Anytime I do a naked strangle, feel free to add those um, defined risk wings if needed. And, and it really depends on your account. So I don't, I, don't put the, I don't put the alternative strikes out to buy for that defined risk uh, because you know there's, there's so many different options to choose, whether you're in an IRA and you're trying to uh, just do a synthetic strangle or if you're in a margin account, but you're not permission for, for naked options and you just wanna do uh, a, a traditional iron condor. You know, th there's so many different variations. So I'm, I'm just giving you trade ideas. I'm going to do some defined risk, some un undefined risk, mix it up. Uh, and that's just, and that's how I trade. It's another way of kind of diversifying your portfolios between strategies. So, uh, so, but, but feel free to take a little bit very, you know, take variations of my trade alerts. You don't have to follow everything exact. Next trade was a closing trade in natural gas. So we got a, uh, a nice contraction implied in implied volatility, as well a down as well as a down move in price gave us the opportunity to bank that uh, trade for a nice profit. Another closing trade in GLD, and this was a, a double calendar that we had on, and kind of the same situation as. Uh, uh, DIA, we're, we're getting close to expiration, only had 10 days to expiration. Gold moved up on us. Uh, you know, you don't have enough time left till expiration to adjust. And so I didn't want gold to kind of rip higher on us and, and really give us a severe loss. So we took a small loss on this trade and, and closed it out. And with implied volatility going up in gold, I did not want to reposition that. So we'll probably look to actually sell premium, do some strangles or iron condors in gold next week. So stay tuned for that. Next trade was an opening trade in TLT. IV percentile got up to 62 at this point. So we put on uh, a strangle in TLT. Again, this is another one that you could have done an iron condor on, but I, I, I chose to do a strangle. Um, Get, uh, strangle will get you your break-evens wider. 
They're a little bit easier to manage, a little bit less transaction cost, which is why I prefer them. Uh, you can see TLT spiked up and then the, the implied volatility on, on uh, Thursday, yesterday actually went down a little bit. So um, anyway, that's where we're at here. It's, it's continuing its, its march higher a little bit. Still, still fairly within this range though that it's been trading in for the last few months. So uh, stay tuned for more in TLT if, uh, if implied volatility continues to escalate to the upside. Next trade was in QQQ. So we didn't have a position on in QQQ. So we put on an iron condor. We take a look at the Qs. Same, same thing across the board. We're getting a lot of these spikes in implied volatility, which is great. You know, after this, just piddling around down here, it feels good to actually finally get some opportunities like this. So we had a position, we already have a position on in SPY, have a position on in, in IWM. Uh, did not have one on in queues. Keep in mind, these, all, these are all very highly correlated, meaning they move together. These are all stock indices, and, and so they're going to move in tandem for the most part. So, you know, if, if you have a position on in SPY and IWM and queues, the reason I spread this out over time is I want price to be able to move around and so I can kind of reposition and recenter my trades at different points. And they're going to move a, move around a little bit differently than each other. So you're, you're getting a little bit of diversification there. But keep in mind, if you have a position in, on an, an Iron Condor on an IWM and one on in SPY, and one on in Qs, you can almost look at that as like you have three different ones on, on the same underlying. Okay, so don't think you're extremely diversified just because you have, uh, you know, positions on in, in you know, th those three because they're going to move around very, very similar but it does make sense to spread those out and as price moves around, put one on here, price moves over here, put one on here, uh, and then spread those out between the different stock indices. So that's what we're doing here. And then lastly, last trade we made yesterday on Thursday was we bought back and closed out our iron condor in soybeans for 40% uh, of max profit, which is our mechanical exit point for iron condors. So that was a nice trade. So that's all for today. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Enjoy some time with your family with Easter. And don't forget to join us for the trade of the week Monday morning. And uh, hopefully this implied volatility stays high. Continues with the opportunity because this is when trading really gets exciting. So look forward to seeing you guys then. Talk to you soon. Bye.